I wish I did get a chance to play more games this year because I really lagged in 2020 in getting more game time in. But if I did have to narrow down my top five games that I did play this year, it would be this list. Now, quick premise, this is not a sponsored video, but this is just a list of games that my group and I genuinely had fun playing this year, when we could play back then. <laughs> Here we go, starting with number five. Now, this one actually is the one that I most recently played because I am wrapping up a tutorial for it, but I had fun playing this game with my fiance, and that game is Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. <laughs> Now in Cleopatra, you're playing as architects that gather resources to build a ton of different structures. Every time you complete a set of structures, Cleopatra is gonna move forward. And throughout the game, you're playing with different powers, prioritizing which resources you're allocating, which combos you're planning ahead of time by combining different structures you're building on top of an insane table presence. If you want a game that instantly grabs your group's attention, this one is it. I think this one is a good medium between new players and seasoned players because it introduces new players to resource management, but it still has enough complexity for seasoned players because you have Worshippers of Sobek, which introduces powers into the system. You have Amulets of Corruption that you have to watch and kind of gauge to make sure you don't gain too much. It has a stunning table presence. It's a great theme. And most importantly for me in particular, um, the pieces aren't there just to look good. They actually function for direct gameplay. And that's why Cleopatra is my number. Five. A tutorial for that is coming very, very soon. I actually already finished filming it. I just need to finish editing it. And with that, let's move on to number four, which is Tapestry. Now, despite me losing pieces from this game because I did bring it to Banff, I actually full on packaged this game in a suitcase and carried it around as we were hiking because I really wanted to take pictures of a lot of different components from it. But I had a four player experience with this back when we could play games together. Tapestry is my number four because it has such a good blend of everything. All the game mechanics from our experience flowed well together. In the exploration track, you have tile placement. In science and military, you have luck with die rolling. In the technology track, you're upgrading different parts of your board. There are just so many ways to approach this game and it feels fresh and different every single time. You have 16 different civilizations with all unique powers. You can go towards the military track, you can go towards the science track if you're trying to go that way to earn victory points, or you can do a combination of both. Or you can do some of science and some of military and some of technology. There are just so many different combinations and ways that you can approach the game depending on the civilization that you end up with and depending on which track you're going to. I also like the miniatures because the buildings are very unique and they are actually being used on your player board or like a side player board. For me, play interaction is a big thing and even though this game has minimal play interaction, I never really craved it in this game for some reason. I think it's because I always was so busy trying to allocate resources and thinking about my moves ahead of time instead of actually thinking about, oh, I want to mess with this player. Oh, I want to sabotage this one. Even with military there, is something that I would always go for in any type of game. I didn't really crave to like battle for some reason. I think for Tapestry in particular, you're finishing at different times and you're also so occupied with trying to figure out your own route that you don't really long for that play interaction. And that's why Tapestry is my number four. My number three is Root. So Root is actually one of the first games that I played solo this year. Actually solo in general, but I had a great time with it. It was a lot of fun playing Root solo. If you like games with unique player powers, Root is one game that you should not miss. With Root, I'm sure many of you know already, but you have very, very, very distinct player powers. This game is a deceptively complex war game. Don't let the theme fool you. Now this one did take me some time to learn, but I did do a tutorial on it if you want to save some time learning to play Root yourself. But because Root is so unique and because it has so many distinct player powers, your approach to playing the game is very different depending on which faction that you choose. Even the way you interact with other players is different with every faction. And you see how this encourages replayability? I love Root because it's constantly pushing you to re-strategize your game plan. What's also pretty cool from our experiences so far is that Root has some pretty nice catch-up mechanics. So you don't really feel like you're completely lost. You don't always know who's gonna win. Like for me, I always like playing as the cats, but sometimes freaking the Woodland Alliance would come out of nowhere and just steal victory away from me. 
So I kind of like that element of surprise and I like not knowing that I'm going to win from like the beginning and just have that pathway be cemented from the get-go. It's hard to take the lead and it's just as hard to maintain it. And that's why I really like Root. Number two, and that is Here to Slay. So Here to Slay is probably the simplest game on this list, but man, Here to Slay is such a fun card game. I love Here to Slay because it's easy, it's thrilling, it's super interactive, and on top of that, it is very, very portable. In Here to Slay, it's also very involved. There's a ton of play interaction, and it's not too simple. That's why I really like it. You also have distinct player powers, but they are nowhere near as drastic as Root. I actually did a full-on review and tutorial if you want to see that here. But the reason why Here to Slay is my number two for 2020 is because the leader just switches back and forth almost every round. Actually, it gets to that point where you're just constantly shifting back and forth, back and forth, and it's so much fun. The pacing is very quick because you only have a limited amount of actions per turn. You can literally pull first place in from one turn, and then on the next turn, with some modifiers and challenge cards, there goes practically all your heroes on your player board. I think Here to Slay does a really good job introducing RPG elements to new players. And despite all of the accessories and add-ons from the player mats to the dice tower to the standees, if you take all that away, essentially it is just a card game, but it is a very, very, very fun card game. You have unique party leaders with individual powers. You have multiple ways to spend your action points. You're attacking monsters. You're messing around with other players. You have too many conditions. And with all that in mind, I think it's one of the most immersive, engaging, interactive, non-collectible card game in the board gaming space. Plus it's super easy and convenient to just pack up and go as well. And my number one, my number one game that I played this year in 2020, one game that you're probably gonna hear maybe too many times going forward, and that is Lords of Hellas. Lords of Hellas, if I had to pick one game from my entire board game collection and play it again and again, it would be that one. I love everything about that game. I love the futuristic Greek god theme. I love the game mechanics. Everything about it is just amazing. Even the Kickstarter campaign when it first launched, that was so much fun because every time I got a notification, I just dropped everything just to read what was in the next update. And I'm so glad that this game also delivered on the promised gameplay. Appreciated amazing miniatures, top quality, top notch, everything. The production quality is off the charts. You really feel like you're going to war with an epic futuristic Greek army. Plus the giant Greek god miniatures, but not really miniatures because they're full on statues at this rate. Um, they're not there just for show because you're actually building each piece by piece as you're progressing throughout the game. And you're also sending priests directly to the monuments to pray and gain stat bonuses for your hero and for your character. You have multiple ways to win. You can sabotage other players. You can attack monsters. You can utilize monsters' strengths. You can team up against the leading player. There's territory control. It is just an epic game with epic scale and amazing table presence. By far one of my favorite games of 2020 and probably you're gonna see this on future lists as well. On top of being a really fun game, it's also wrapped around my favorite theme which is Greek gods and I loved how Awakened Realms put their own spin on it and put this futuristic theme around them as well. I went all in in this pledge and I never regretted it since. And that is why Lords of Hellas is my number one favorite game that I played this year in 2020. And with that, comment down below which one is your favorite game or any of these games on your top five list. I would love to know. Thank you all for tuning in and watching this video and I will see you all in the next one.